Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Recap. This is the show where I look at your comments and feedback from the past week and react to them accordingly. There's been so many comments this week and sometimes I feel that it's faster if I do it in a video. Hence the recap. And unlike the past recaps, there's nothing on the table. No new plans. Yes, yeah, seriously, no new plans. I've been so busy with work and stuff for the past week that I haven't had the chance to go out and get new plants. Which is fine because I'm saving up for a new toy. It's not a plant but still related to my channel. I'm hoping to get one of those gimbals for my camera. It's a device that stabilizes the camera so I can hold handhold my camera and not worry about shaky footage. Yeah, I'm working towards that. Since there's nothing for me to show you here anyway, let's go inside. Now before we go over the latest episode, there's a couple of comments I want to address in the previous recap. The first one is from Alex Lake. Also I'd like to see a video on different blue chocks. I've seen quite a few different ones. My partner has two different kinds and I bought a ground cover type today. Great idea for a video. I will look into recording one this weekend. And another similar suggestion from Natalia Voskresenska. Voskresenska. Do your filler blue echeverias, the Glocka, and the Elegance. I always mix them up. That's an excellent choice. I am really looking forward to doing this one. Because I have a very good story about this. And it's close to my heart, so to speak. And now let's have a look at episode 76. And that's reworking the succulent stream. I hope you don't mind me whispering a bit because everyone else is asleep. It's about half an hour before midnight. So, yeah. <clears throat> First one is from Katip Gilbreth. Looks amazing. Love the added color of the other Echeverias. Enjoyed everything about the video. Thanks. I'm so glad you like it because I've been feeling a bit adventurous with mixing and matching different types. I was originally thinking of going with a gradual hue, but the thing is, working with succulents and winter, you'll have to acknowledge that they could shift colors when, once it gets warmer, so the colors won't stay. So I decided to do a mix of various shades as long as they would contrast against all of the blues and that's the thing that I had in mind. There's definitely a lot of comments in this video and a lot of them are compliments and I thank all of you. I'm just going to call out your names because I really appreciate your feedback. So there's Patricia Horkera, Terry Schmidt, JPC11. Maria Heronima, Ginger831, Claudia Morel Ruiz, Smitha Ontedu, Isa Lidlauska, David No, Muna Nabankema, Tammy Finch, Zenizana66, Blissful Box, Alex Late, Nathan Poole, Grija Santos, Yuan Tian, Marilyn Rich, Aneta S, Sherman Soberon, Patty Bugenmos, Grace Hu, Papucci, Given to Grow, Jackie Moon. A special mention to a few comments because they had because they have specific feedback that's quite interesting and I just have to address them. So from JPC11, 
Really nice photography and editing. The garden is a dream come to life. Thank you. You know what? I'm, I really appreciate that you noticed the photography and editing because I've been working hard for the past 20 or so episodes. No, 30. More than 30 episodes. Improving the image quality and the editing quality. I, and if you've been following the and if you've been following the series for quite a while, you notice that there's a lot of styles that I've been trying around. I've been messing around with my editing workflow. So yeah. I think I really love this episode and the episode about creating the sea of blue. I love how I don't know, I think I'm starting to find the style that I really like. Because previously I was doing those transitions between one scene and the next. It felt alright at first, but eventually I when I was re-watching my videos it started to feel annoying. So I'm sorry I put you through that. <laughs> and I hope this new style is better. <laughs> From Isa Zidlowska. Wow Chuck. What a beautiful refresh. I couldn't picture how all of those different edge bears would work well would work together until I saw the finished product. Good job. Yes, I have a mental image in my mind. It's not exactly uh, I don't know how to explain it, but I just have a very rough idea in my head and once I see the plants I know instantly what I want to use. It's, although there's a lot of contrast, yeah, I, yeah, it's mainly about contrast and colors, but there's also the element of texture that I look into, and especially that since I've been doing this, I've been working with succulents for two years now, I know how they grow, and I know how they look like through the years, through the seasons. So that also, to a lesser extent, factors into my decision. I believe that anyone can do it, you just have to be mindful of many stuff, you know? From Tammy Finch. Love seeing how you're getting along with that nice flat shovel. <laughs> it's my favorite shovel now. From Zanizana66. That made such a difference, Chuck. And it was great having the labels on each of the Echeverias we included. Yeah, it was a last minute decision that I made because I... The reason why this video looks a bit more or maybe a lot more polished to my previous ones is that because I submitted this for review, I had other YouTubers look at my, my video and give me feedback about what I could improve. You could find the link in this corner or in the description below because I really wanted uh, third party feedback, honest feedback about how they feel like watching my videos especially especially from an outsider someone who isn't into succulents so it would be mainly about whether they found the video engaging you know the way i approach it was that i pretended that i am someone who knows nothing or is a relative newbie to succulents and what would newbies want of course more visual aids more help especially the ids of the plants so I figured this would add a lot of value to the video. It's a lot of work putting in the text, but I think it paid off. I'm going to try and keep this up because I think that this would be really helpful, really useful for, for all the videos that I would be doing. I hope I can maintain this. From Nathan Poole. Wow, that was a fantastic episode. I love the extra colorful selection you placed around the stream. The reds really made it pop. Also, a great choice on the colored red border pebbles surrounding the grass. It's a great contrast. I must say, another fantastic job you have done. Keep up the good work and I look forward to your next episode. Thank you so much, Nathan. I'm so glad you mentioned the red border pebbles. It was starting to get annoying how I had to redo the edges every few months. No, not every few months, at least three every three or four months. Because they get 
they eventually get eroded and the grass we have kikyu grass on our lawn and those things are very invasive they grow really fast especially when it, it keeps raining so I figured that if I added pebbles in between they might have they might find it harder to grow and spread and move over to my succulent area or at least that was the motivation behind it from Marilyn Rich love your garden Chuck I have a silly question for you when you work in your when you work in your garden all day squatting do your ankles and feet get sore <laughs> my goodness mine sure do mine is mainly the back because when I it's not when I'm lifting things because I practice proper body mechanics when I'm lifting I squat properly but the thing is when I lean down to plant especially especially in the street because it's hard getting to the top without stepping on the other plants so what I do is I make uh, what's the word I step over and step on either the large boulders around the, the mound or in a black space in the soil and you have to flex to hunch bend in weird ways that there's so much strain on your lower back so that's what usually hurts for me but only if I bend in a weird way otherwise so far I'm lucky that I haven't uh, I haven't broken my back nor make my feet sore although in retrospect I should have started working from the back and slowly forwards but in the case of the previous episode that would mean that I have to get rid of everything then replant everything and that would be annoying and it would take lots of time when I was filming I only had a few hours to work because I started a bit late in the afternoon and I didn't really want to waste time from Aneta S the burgundy color of the new Echeverias defines green stream perfectly and complements each other very well great job by the way what's about this voice we are hearing in the background Jealous neighbors, maybe? <laughs> no, it's just Zaki. It's so noisy. From Patty Gugenmos, I was going to suggest using Zach's front loader on that red rock, then you get the hang of dumping it. That new dirt looks so luscious. I originally thought of using the trowel to pour rocks in because I was. Part of me wanted to do a slow motion footage, but during editing, I changed my mind. And later on, I just thought of pouring everything in and this explains why in the later clip most of it has been covered and it saved me a lot of time doing that, just pouring stuff from given to grow. Wow, that looks fabulous. I really like the darker Echeveras with a blue stream. Your choices were spot on. I can say that I have never ever had a pile of dead leaves that big of, of any of my succulents. No wonder you were at it an hour. <laughs> and that's just from the Glocas. Imagine if I went the entire garden. Well, actually I did, but I didn't show the big pile because I had them because I had them in various tubs, various pots. Although Gloria did have a chance to see those piles, those pots with all, filled with the dead leaves back when she was here. So yeah. There's a lot. And that's a back garden. Imagine a front garden. From Jackie Moon. Wait. You're Chuck and your kid is Jackie? My dad is named Chuck and my name is Jackie. And he taught me how to garden. Are we in parallel universes? <laughs> Pretty close, because his name is Zachary. We call him Zach or Zaki. Although I mentioned this in my, I mentioned this in my comment, but we were close to naming Nikki Dominic, our daughter. We were really close to naming her Jackie, or at least that was my one of my choices. Is that was my, one of my choice of names? Because with Zach, I had the idea of using a recursive acronym. A recursive acronym is an acronym that contains itself. In the acronym, for example, with Zachary, his full name is Zachary Adrian Cirillo. 
So his initials are Z, A, and C. And his initials form the first three letters of his name. Right? So his initials references the whole name. We could have done the same with our baby girl if we gave her Jack, J-A-C. So that means that we would have to think of a middle name starting with A. That would be Jacqueline A something Cerillo for it to work. But as it stands right now, a lot of people are having trouble saying my name and Zach's name. They would often say Chuck when referring to Zach. And they would often say Zach when referring to me. It's funny, man. And finally, there's one more comment here from episode 67. I was about to turn off my laptop right when I saw this. And it's a question from Yuan Tian. Love your succulent garden so much. How often do you water them? I made a brief teaser video about how often I water. And the link is here. But the gist is, it depends on the season and it depends on how fast the soil dries. So in my case, I only, because the way I water is I deeply soak and drench the whole thing, the whole plant, the soil, and I let it dry. I give it, it really depends, man. Let's say in summer, the soil dries completely after a few days, maybe two days, sometimes even just a day. So as soon as I see that the soil is quite dry, and knowing that I collect echeverias which are actively growing during the warmer months, I water often during summer, during the warmer months. All I do is I check if the soil is dry, then drench, flood the whole thing. On the flip side, now that it's winter, I haven't been watering any of them. And that's mainly because we are getting occasional rains, maybe once or twice a week. And that's plenty enough water for them. Especially since my echeverias are dormant, so I leave them alone. The only ones that I water sometimes would be the aeoniums that are outdoors. And of course, my smaller plants and propagations that are under the shade, under the, the eaves. Because they, there's no way for them to be watered by the rain. So have a look at that video and I promised in that video that I was supposed to create a longer version of my watering video. I'll work on it sometime. Maybe when the days are longer again. So right now I'm really having difficulty finding the time to film. Especially since the days are really short and on most days that I'm free it's raining and my top priority is filming my Let's Plant episode so that usually takes an entire afternoon leaving me with little time to work on anything else. Thank you for watching Recap. If you're new to the channel please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell that way you get notified of the next Let's Plant video. It's coming up every Tuesday my time, Tuesday morning. That would be Monday evening on the other side of the world if you're in the US. And every Saturday evening, I publish a recap like this very one that you're watching right now. And it comes out late night, Saturday, my time. Or if you're in the US, that would be morning, your time. That would be Saturday morning, your time. Eventually, I'm going to try inserting a third video during the week. But that mainly depends on whether I get to film in the weekend or not. So we'll see. It's something that I can't commit to yet, but it's something that I really want to do. Because there's a lot of time between the two videos that I put out every week, and there's a lot of stuff that I want to work on. I just don't have enough daylight. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode.